Supernatural voices, sounds, and images. Distinct supernatural voice types are said to either traverse the air or reverberate within one's head. Supposedly, they either sound like natural human voices or hypothalamic voices, seemingly consisting of syllable sans larynx, which whiz past in spiral, some of which cannot be described without experiencing them yourself. A good example is voices picked up by a young lady scanner. Concerning uh, the voices I've heard, some sounded like animal noises, while others were clearly human, including an unrecognizable voice, which bid me good night and address me by name using clearly enunciated English upon my slipping into bed. I have also been bidden good morning. Numerous times somebody said hello or hi. Seemingly a mischievous spirit made sound effects of the most diverse and interesting types on numerous occasions. While sensations of being struck violently, shocked, burned, or cold air hitting my face also occurred, sometimes accompanied with flash images in my mind, which corresponded to the sound effects or sensations. Sometimes someone apparently yelled menacingly. The first names of various people were spoken a dozen times. Twice I received both a first and last name. Bobby Christie, written in a flash image, and Eunice Green, spoken. However, the idea that ghosts inhabit the exact place where they lived or died is a cliched stereotype. There may have been a trillion people who ever lived. I need much more information to pinpoint an exact person for absolute proof. Once, while pottering a theological problem, I got frustrated and gave up. Just then, a voice sounding like a toy balloon would, if it could talk, squeaked, Keep going! I tried again, but again quit. Then another squeaky balloon voice chimed in. In unison, they squealed, Keep going! Afterwards, I looked up what the early church fathers thought about the subject. Same conclusion, but different worry. Sometimes I've been admonished for inappropriate thoughts once I was told to pray. Numerous times oversleeping caused a relentless barrage, forcing me to get up, sometimes knocking, while nobody nobody is home. Other times hostility towards me or my religious faith was expressed, therefore I said to be gone. Once I was asked, what happened? I said, what do you mean? And a flash image appeared consisting of an arm with a wristwatch on holding a cell phone. I explained that by pressing the antennas on my ladybug keychain, the wings uh, would open to reveal a pocket watch, and instead of having a cell phone bill, I'm saving money for something else. Once someone asked me how old I was, and I replied. I then asked, who are you? And the name of an organization appeared on a plate in a flash image. Once I repeatedly requested a regular conversation, in response, a flash image of a TV enveloped in static appeared. Perhaps this meant that they couldn't come through uh, uh, well enough. <clears throat> On other occasions, flash images of someone I never saw before appeared in my mind as clear as a photograph. Perhaps it was the person who passed on. Sometimes when I thought intensely about something or left my writing out, <clears throat> somebody said a couple words in commentary. Several times someone said my name, and I've gotten yes and no answers to some questions. Towards the beginning of when the voices started, I asked somebody where they were. They responded, right here. Yet puzzlingly, after six months of hearing these voices, somebody asked me if I lived alone. And I don't. Clearly not. Uh, the most I've, I've ever heard at once is a ten-syllable sentence. Receiving only one or two words is far more common than clear, intelligible communication. It has been postulated that people may learn how to fully communicate with spirits in the future. This might not happen, and only broken communication with the spirit world or tiny glimpses may be possible, since we're only allowed to, as the scripture says, see through a glass darkly, 1 Corinthians 13, 12, in our present life. Furthermore, thousands of high-functioning people claim to hear voices, including the Greek philosopher Socrates and St. Joan of Arc. There's a theory that people hear voices because the government harasses people with signals from cell phone towers. This is seemingly impossible without someone having undergone brainwave analysis to identify their frequency. Besides, brainwave frequencies aren't like radio or television frequencies, or at least not exactly, uh, since those operate uh, because the receiving devices are unchangeably fixed. 
Brains alter their physical makeup over time, the result of learning and aging. It's called neuroplasticity, making this scenario impossible to do on a regular basis, that is. Then there's the perennial charge of mental illness leveled at thousands of people with higher functioning and morals than their judgmental accusers who know absolutely nothing about human brain, how human brains work and who would rather slander, pe slander people excuse me, uh, they don't know than accept the supernatural. In my case, my brain functioning is greater after years of experiencing uh, the, these phenomena than before experiencing them. Full body manifestations. Apparently, full body manifestations are images which spirits are allowed to present, not carbon copies of their former bodies, in which case they'd be naked. Besides, visual manifestations are invariably clothed completely, implying that immodesty is sinful. This sentiment was consistent until the 20th century. Once upon entering my second floor bedroom, I saw a woman enter through the middle bottom section of the outside wall and closed window. Besides her image being completely solid and sharply defined, it was even brighter than the surrounding room. She appeared middle-aged, her hair pinned back, and was wearing a full-length blue dress resembling twisted drapery and clasped on top. It didn't immediately register exactly what was happening, so it seemed like she entered through an incomplete wall under construction. At first, since my mind could not grasp a stranger entering my room at night unannounced, I assumed she was my mother. As she walked straight towards me, looking directly at me, I realized she was a stranger, and assuming an intruder, my body tensed up tightly. In shock, I yelled, Hey! Then she quickly vanished. Because of my current religious dogmatism, I thought this was a sensory overload, albeit one I would never forget. Establishing, establishing the authenticity of my visitation was my mother's similar visitation, identical in numerous details. The difference was that in this case, the image was, though solid, completely colorless. In my, in my mother's case, no color to the image. My mother discovered her gliding on the ground floor. That's what my mother said. Uh, the image turned her head, and upon seeing my mother, our visitor's facial expression turned into one of surprise, and she quickly vanished. I had full colors in my uh, visitation. It is impossible to share the same illusion without some prior consultation. We both kept our experiences to ourselves for years. My mother eventually told her story because she mistook my experiences of merely feeling connected to God for supernatural events. In addition, I saw six solid uh, bodily manifestations on different occasions years later. On one image, only the person's top half was visible, uh, while once a Hispanic man and small boy appeared together. The man projected his arm through the couch and my side while I was lying on the couch, which got my attention, leaving me with an unusual sensation of crackling energy. The man's image was solid, the boy slightly fuzzy. I said hello and extended my hand, but they quickly disappeared. Other eyewitnesses of both solid and transparent ghosts include Presidents Theodore Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt on several occasions, Roosevelt's valet Cesar Carrera, Eleanor Roosevelt's assistant Mary Eben, Winston Churchill, Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands, President Coolidge's wife Grace, President Lyndon Johnson's wife uh, Lady Bird, President Ford's daughter Susan, President Reagan's daughter Maureen and husband Dennis Revel, and several other others, the latest being George W. Bush. On several occasions, Abraham Lincoln's ghost appeared, and hundreds of apparitions of the saints have been reported by devout believers throughout Christian history. Sometimes, after hearing about a full-body manifestation, the experience is reduced into something vague, seeing an it, or kind of seeing something. That's not what we're saying. These experiences are as if you open your front door and I stood there staring at you, or as Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Some seemingly real manifestations are captured on video. Stay tuned for part four.